Bruce, you might assume that a lie detector test is the best way to get to the truth, but a former CIA officer conducted thousands of interrogations and created new techniques along the way for recognizing deceptive answers. His name is Philip Houston, and he's one of three former officers who have written this book. It's called Spy the Lie. I like the title, Mr. Houston. He joins us now with senior correspondent John Miller, a former FBI official. Hello, hello, and welcome. Hi, Thanks for having me. No, I now look at life totally differently, I have to say, after reading your book, including how I behave and what I see in others. But you say that everybody lies. Everybody. Yes, in fact, uh, the research shows that the uh, average person lies at least 10 times a day, which, of course, includes some of the uh, serious lies, but also the social lies. You Is there a difference between the lies men and women tell? Yes, men tend to, and this is a generalization, but men tend to tell lies often that make themselves look a little bit better, whereas women, you know, often tell lies or the social lies to spare people's feelings. They don't like to hurt, hurt people's feelings. Who tells more lies, men or women? Uh, it's, uh, there's a, a raging debate about that, but I think there's a lot of folks that believe that men might slightly have the edge. <laughs> men have the edge, Charlie. Let me talk about the, pro <laughs> Thank you. Let me talk about the process, too. I mean, you, were, you administered polygraphs when you were in the CIA, correct? Yes. And, and coming out of that, you were asked to do what? I was uh, approached at one point to help d uh, develop a training program to train our officers to do a better job of collecting information when they're in that mode of being face to face with the target that they're focused on. So if you're talking to someone and you want to know whether they're lying to you, what do you look for and why are you um sure about your own perception well one of the things that we know charlie is first is is to understand what we shouldn't look for um, in in the past there's been a lot of focus on things called global behaviors so for example i might uh, in the past folks have said well gee john is not sitting in a way uh that in which he looks truthful he might have closed posture no 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 not my john <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. i uh, swear i'm telling the truth the, the, the problem with that the problem with that is is I'm only guessing why he's sitting that way he may be cold he may be comfortable that may be right, how he always right, sits right. but what we've done is we have identified what are the most reliable deceptive indicators and we help people understand how to connect those indicators to the question that they're asking or the topic that they're interested in and what yes, are those indicators yes, such as yeah we, they're both deceptive verbal and nonverbal indicators so for example verbally when you ask someone a question and all of a sudden they repeat your question that might be an indication that they need to buy a little bit of time to create or come up with a more uh, acceptable uh, acceptable answer yeah we see that every day at this table I mean you see people that are especially in fact people it's about a political season and and you can see them thinking or repeating the question I mean that's obvious R right exactly you also see people go into what we call the convince mode so if you ask me a question in which the facts are not my ally then immediately I have to figure out if I can't talk about the facts what can I talk about and so what I'll often do is go into the convince mode uh, I Which might means what I might do uh, something such as say you know if you were in, an investigator and saying Phil did you take this missing money I would never do that I'm an honest person ask anyone my goodness I wouldn't you know I wouldn't jeopardize my job by doing something like that and it sounds good to the untrained ears but to someone who's skilled in detecting deception it's a, a there are immediate red flags when we see someone do this. John, what do you think about this? Well, when I was with the Los Angeles Police Department, I brought Phil and his team in um, to train detectives. We did the anti-terrorist division and the robbery homicide division. And these are some very jaded people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now, but they've seen it all. Well, and, and they've questioned all the suspects and they've caught all the lies. Um, so a lot of them walked into the room, especially the people who've been doing it 25, 30 years, saying, you know, what's some CIA guy who questions spy is going to tell me about, you know, how to break a murder suspect. And I have to say, after the three-day course, I had veteran detectives coming up to me, hitting their heads saying, I need to re-question every suspect I've interviewed in the last two years. Wow. And, and sometimes it's, 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 it's I, I, very I, dramatic and I, it's simple. I, I get that too. When I was reading the book, John, I understand why veteran people were saying that because 
you would have places where people say, I swear to God, I never did that. Or, and you said, that's also an indicator when somebody brings out the Lord. Sure. When somebody goes on attack mode. What are you saying about me, John Miller? Why would you suggest that? Do you know what your job is? I mean, I started looking at everything very differently. So I understand why veterans would do that. You know, when we led to you, uh, David Letterman did the clip about Anthony Weiner. You include Anthony Weiner in your book. Yes. Which I guess you could say a classic case. Yes, he is. Can, can we show a clip and then, sure. I, then if you could weigh in on the other side about what you saw when you saw that clip of Anthony Weiner? Congressman, I think the main question that everyone has is, was that a picture of you? Well, the main question that a lot of people are asking is, did I send the photograph? I did not. This was a prank, a hoax. What about that said to you, he's not telling the truth? Well, the, the first indicator and the immediate indicator is he doesn't answer the question. The simple question is, is a yes or no question. Is that picture you? Uh -huh. And obviously, the, 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 he doesn't want to share the fact that it is me, so that fact is not his ally. So then he immediately goes into the convince mode. And as you said a moment ago, sometimes they even try to attack a little bit by saying, well, this is a, this is a prank or it's a hoax. Someone has done something to me to try to maybe get you even to back off a little bit in your question and not pursue this. What is it like for the children that grow up around you? I'm thinking, <laughs> what kind of dad, what is it like to have a dad that can spot a lie? Do you use this at home? Well, I, I, uh, I, I try to be selective. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. I'm very fortunate. I've had great kids. They're all grown now. But, uh, but they presented challenges at times, and, and uh, this certainly helped along the way. I think, I think of the homework example. Yes. You know, where even, even as a parent, you're like, did I phrase that question the right way? You asked your son about homework once. Yes, exactly. One, uh, my son had a, uh, a little bit of a problem at one point doing his homework, so he came home one day, and I happened to have the day off, <laughs> and he walked in, and I just simply said, without thinking about it, I asked the wrong question. I said, do you have any homework today? And, uh, and Chris looked at me and he said immediately, without batting an eye, he said, Dad, we had a substitute today. And I thought, well, that makes sense. And, and it wasn't for, you know, until a few minutes later I realized that my son had just snookered me. So we had to ask a better question. So I brought him back down and said, how much do you have? And he had a ton. Yes, <laughs> Asking the better question. Yes. Yeah, so you don't say, did you steal the money? You just say, what did you do with the money that you took? Yes. A presumptive question. I know I learned a lot. Thank you, John Miller. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, John Miller. Thank you, Philip Houston. The name of the book is called Spy the Lie. It's on sale now.